welcome back to the whole bucket and to Zebra Talks. This is our next to the last week of Zebra Talks. And today's topic of Zebra Talks is um, what has changed. So I thought before we get to what has changed exactly, um, we should take a look at where we were and review to figure out what's changed. So let's take a flip through our book. Look at that. We got through all of those prompts. So the first one was early days. And I talked a little bit about my um, personal journey <laughs> to finding ways to stay positive and be positive through the ups and downs of diagnosis and lack thereof and all kinds of things like that. Um, I, I, so this is where, this is where I came from. Then it says, who are you right now? So basically what, um, oh, good grief. List things that make you who you are. I am an artist. I am a toddler because I'm sort of learning how to play with my toy. Um, I'm an always learner, it's still very true. I'm a resourceful person. Um, that's one of my strengths. And now that I um, am looking backward, I forgot that last week. That's something I should have said about why I am a successful zebra instead of a failed horse because I am pretty darn resourceful. And it, when I can't, get something done the way everybody else gets it done, I find a way. <laughs> I am a self-advocate. I haven't always been. I have always tried to be, but I don't, haven't always known how to be. Being a self-advocate is a learned skill and you need to study, study how to be a self-advocate. Um, I am overwhelmed to inaction. Very true very true. How do you feel about yourself today? Lousy, lazy, foggy, fat, sick, self-judgy, unfair, a failure, rebellious preteen. I'm a rebellious preteen because I quit things that I know are helpful. I don't want that. <laughs> you can't tell me. Yeah, I'm still that. Hopeless, overwhelmed, um, proud of my resilience. So I wasn't all bad things. What kind of zebra are you? So I named what kind of zebra I am. Maybe you just listed um, your condition that make you a zebra. Condition or conditions that make you a zebra. I have named myself an alien zebra because my body hates this planet. It hates the sun, it hates the air, it hates chemicals, it hates um, stuff. It just hates things on this planet. And whatever planet I'm actually from, it wants to go back there. And I'm a zebra because I have Ehlers-Danlos. And it means we function different than other people. What is seen and what is not seen? So this was about what do other people see of my own condition. They might see limping and tripping and swelling up, angioedema attacks. I don't think I wrote that on here, did I? No, I didn't. So I have angioedema attacks and I will... Um, swell up. Sometimes it's just in my eye, but I know an attack is coming, and I have heard people say, there, there's no swelling. There's no swelling. What are you talking about? And they think, you're just winking. Why are you winking? Open your eye. Well, because the top of my eyelid swells, and sometimes it just stops right there, and that's it. And that's, that's like, not a big deal. Not a big attack, right? But what I don't know is, is it going to stop right there? Because sometimes I swell up so bad people can't recognize me. 
I walked into the hospital and I had the nurse at the desk say, Biophyte or allergies? Well, neither technically, but I was not in a bar fight. Um, what is seen and not seen? Um, seen is the swelling and the limping and the tripping and the um, whatever. What is not seen? Um, I broke confused easy and I think that that is seen because I think you watch it happen to me when I'm sitting here talking to you and the whole thing just goes away. Um, exercise intolerance is one that's hard to see, but in the end is seen clearly. Um, I can do physical activity, but man, I have to choose carefully what I do and how much I do because I will crash hard if I do too much. And too much, it's hard to judge what too much is. <sighs> um, you might notice that I've disappeared. Of course, then you're not seeing me and you're not seeing what's going on, but you're noticed I'm not around and I'm not talking to people and I'm, and I'm whatever. I'm probably laid up in bed for a few days. Not fun. Things that are not seen at all. Um, all the doctor's appointments, people outside of myself and my immediate family, my husband and son anyway, um, are not going to see that. Um, people aren't going to see all of the bills that go along with this and all of the stress that goes along with that. Um, so lots of stuff is seen and not seen. And this was kind of saying, how much stuff do I have going on that is either helped by or judged by the outside world? And how much stuff do I have going on that other people might not be aware of? And do I need to make them aware of it? Like, do I need to say, yeah, I'm going through a really hard time because of this right now? Or do I need to understand that the reason I'm snapping at people is because I'm really letting myself stressed out over the bills or over the fact that I have 10 appointments and I just don't want to go to another one? Um... And do I need to get my head around that stuff so that I start reacting or interacting with the world in a better way? Um, look at mental health, the human brain. What did I say? Exercise to your ability, eat and drink what's right for you. Practice sleep hygiene. Oh, this is all the stuff that's important for mental health. Relax. Learn how to relax. Be here, be now, be happy. <gasps> Be here, be now. Choose happy. Um, set goals and priorities. Count every success. I've had a few days, especially just in the last couple weeks, where the only thing that I have managed to accomplish is sitting at my desk. And I don't mean doing anything. I mean just sitting. For days in a row that's uh, that's sometimes all I've done is just sit and I'm like okay well I had a couple of um, healthcare providers say well that is your success then you sat <laughs> um challenge your negative thoughts yeah challenge everything negative is it true Am I really a failed horse? Am I really a failure? Right? If you don't understand the zebra and horse thing, but you tell yourself that you're a failure, are you really? I'm, I mean, maybe. But it's all about perspective, and it's all about how you think about things, and, and are you trying to force yourself to be something you're not? And if you are a failure, do you need help? Maybe you need help. Maybe you're going to keep failing until you get some help with physical or mental or or understanding, education, or whatever. What's, what's causing the problem? And by the way, failure is not horrible. Stop feeling horrible about things that don't work out right. Failure is educational. You learn far more from failing than you ever do from constant success. 
um, stay connected, and I wrote, if you wanna. There are many people, myself included to some degree, who just don't wanna people. You don't have to people if you don't wanna. Or stay connected in whatever way and to whatever amount you want to. Whatever works for you, right? Um, the calm and the storm. The calm is manageable pain, ability to function at at least a minimal daily care level. The storm is a complete crash. Complete crash. I wrote confusion and physical instability. Oh, the signs of a crash. I should have labeled that. Um, so this is all about learning how to identify where you're at between the calm and the storm. Because we usually are places in between, right? Um, how often I lose words and get confused and can't function brain-wise tells me how far away from the calm I'm getting and how close I'm getting to the storm. Also, physical instability. Like, how scary are my stairs? <laughs> if my stairs are really super scary, I know that I might be pushing my body physically too far. And maybe I need to back off. Practice gratitude. Awesome idea. Awesome, awesome. Sometimes it's just the tiniest thing. If you can't hold on to anything else, just hang on to the tiniest thing that you can as a positive thing. Be grateful for your gerbil. Okay, your hamster. The guinea pig. Be thankful for your favorite blanket. Be thankful for tea. Be thankful for Malto meal. Gosh, I love Malto meal. I don't get to eat it very often, but when I am down and out the most, it is the best comfort food. Hands down for me. Hands down. The best comfort food. Now, if I'm really down and out, I can't make it. <laughs> I am very thankful for and grateful that Malto meal is in the world. Maybe you're thankful, you know, that your mail came today. I don't know. Practice gratitude. Anything. People, pets, surroundings, anything around you. Um, how's your mindset? Are your legs working today? Are they, are they mostly working today? Are you... Do, can I turn, I can turn the page today. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's all you get today, right? Maybe you just can do that. Never forget the basics. Eat, breathe, move. You can be thankful for any of these. Can you move on your own? Anything, any amount, any body part? Can you breathe on your own? Can you eat on your own? There are people in the world who cannot. So don't think that these are an automatic. I'm not saying be grateful because other people can't, right? I'm not one of those people. But I'm say what I'm saying is don't think that I'm, there's nothing certain, right? Nothing. If you can't be grateful for anything else, but you've got one of these or all three of these, be grateful for these. How can others accommodate you? So we talked a little bit about um, if there are family members or friends who are interested in being more supportive or any support or even if you just wish they would be supportive, <laughs> um, what can they do? For me, I said they can learn what zebrahood is. Um, they can accept my answers. Oh my gosh, have you ever had people 
say, oh, but it just, I just, just a little bit, just uh, uh, for a little while, just, I mean, it's not that much. If I say no, please just understand that the answer is no. And if you're me, or a person like me, stop caving to guilt. Because <laughs> I cave to guilt all the time. <sighs> Just be willing to see and hear what's happening. Whoever is your support person or support thing, support staff, I don't know. Whoever is your support, um, hopefully, can just see and hear what's going on. Pay attention. Um, and if they want to know what's going or that's um, the stuff I wish people could do to accommodate. Just see and hear what's going on. I don't ex I don't want much from other people. I'm pretty self-reliant. Um, but just be aware a little bit. Sometimes I will need help. Um, how could professionals help more? Healthcare professionals help more? Um, make more time? Not in their control. Always be a learner? I think a lot of healthcare professionals do. Um, always want to learn, um, create a chart of symptoms and diagnoses, um, and create an itinerary of care. All kinds of ideas that I actually have been working on and putting in place, and I will have an update for you very soon. Uh, shout out to supporters. Um, two in my home, Art and Zebra folks, so all of you online, um, Wowzers people, Discorders, um, a, a particular nurse practitioner, a particular doctor, a particular psychologist, and a particular physical therapist. I count myself insanely lucky that I have four healthcare professionals that I am really, really encouraged by, and I hope they never leave, move, retire. Just, like, never. Never. I'm older than most of... No, I'm not. I'm only older than half of them. Two of them are closer to my own age, and they may retire before I'm done with them. That's just not allowed. I'm sorry. And four furry supporters that I thank you to every single one of you if you recognize who you might be on this page. Good grief. Celebrate a win. Defemorember. I finished Defemorember this year. The whole thing. The book isn't done though. I should pull that journal out and work on it. Um... We talked about spoon theory and introduced what it is about how you count your energy and how you express what your energy is to other people. Um, we talked about motivations. So I talked about the things that motivate me personally, and then this page should be about you. What motivates you personally? Curiosity motivates me. I am nosy as all get out. I just want to understand things and people and stuff. Creative expression motivates me, so art, learning, and travel, which I can't travel. I'm very sad about that. Um, what motivates me? I wish to feel and function as good slash well as I possibly can. That motivates me to keep going in the medical field, um, trying to find solutions to issues. Uh, what makes me happy? Rich colors, fluffy, fuzzy things, squishy things, magical things, foresty things and feeling. Oh, just, I, I could just live in the forest. Um, I have a love affair with Dunn. That's not always a good one because that sets me up for failure. And I like kits. I mean... Isn't there an animal whose baby are kits? Is that a fox, I think? They're lovely, too. And they also make me happy. But I mean kits of supplies. So I've started doing my, um, organizing my art supplies into kits of things. 
just, I just love it. Here. This is not a kit, but this is my magical foresty stuff that makes me happy. So I needed a journal to show off some of the um, bits and bobs that I make for journals and show how they work so people understand how they work. So I made this journal. Um, it has nothing in it. But when I make a thing and I want to show somebody how it's going to work in a book, if they choose to make it and use it in their own journal, or they wonder what to do, right? Then I have this little journal model to show them. And in the meantime, look at that's no regular but dragonfly. That's a magical dragonfly. Um, so I'm trying to show his glitter because it's pretty and it's green and it matches the forest on this journal. All right, I'll put it away. Anyway, um, while I'm not using it for, you know, business purposes, it's just sitting there giving me that whole forest feeling. Um, life hacks. What life hacks do you use? What life hacks can you share with other people? These are my life hacks, and can they maybe help you too? Routines on my Alexa device help me a ton and I am expanding those. I promised to not judge my expansion for one month and then expand again and one month. Um, I hold, I have many tools for the same project or yeah, project, but process is more of a good answer. Like I have an electric can opener and the hand twist kind of can opener. I have, um, I'm a paper artist, right? Paper crafter. Um, I have so many different ways to cut paper. It is ridiculous. That's not different for any other um, paper artist that I've seen. We all seem to have, you know, all the different toys. That's because we love the toys. Also, it helps me because my hands don't always cooperate. And if they cooperate one way one day, they don't cooperate that way the next day. So... Multi-purpose. Delivery of everything I can. Entirely true. Every single thing that I can have delivered instead of go shopping for, I have delivered. And freezer cooking. In fact, next weekend is freezer cooking. In bulk freezer cooking. And I will be cooking for at least six weeks. No, I won't be cooking for six weeks. I will be cooking a six week supply of food all next weekend. And then I have to do it again for at least six weeks. Uh, gosh, I love freezer cooking. Um, favorite ways to recharge, stretch or walk? I don't know if that's really a favorite. I mean, let's get real. Walking can be dangerous. <laughs> um, but Stretching and moving does take away some pain. If I sit too long, I'm sure you're the same. Most people are. Stretching, moving, walking, as whatever you can helps a ton. If you know somebody whose um, chronic health condition makes it so that they cannot walk or stretch on their own and you want to know a way to help them, ask them if they'd like you to help them stretch. Because, whoa. It's amazing. Okay, art and meditation are both things that help me, and I don't do the meditation nearly enough. Literally life-changing. When I learned how to use and apply meditation without thinking I have to be a perfect monk person to get it done and get it to function and get it right. No, you don't. You don't need that. That's not, it's just not true, but it's life changing and I don't do it. And I really sh don't understand why I don't do things that I've proven to myself are really good. Make yourself a promise. Don't judge my expanded routine for at least a month. If I get sick or hurt in the, in that month, it's going to be longer. And I did. I got really sick for like two weeks. 
I was out. So, whatever. My advice is art as therapy. So I wrote down some icky feelings and stuff down on this piece of paper and then drew this and colored it and covered all the yuck with pretty and cute things. Most helpful advice I've been given is, oh, and see, I didn't even, I did I was going to come back and finish this B. Now I, I still can. Um, be here right now, be happy. Most helpful advice I've ever been given. Really thinking through this concept on a regular basis and remembering to do this. Hugely helpful. Um, my advice to the undiagnosed or the newly diagnosed was to focus on one or two things at a time. If you need to stop that one or two things, take care of whatever has come up, then return to those one or two things. Do not, um, do not pick another new thing until you feel like those things are in control. Appreciate your strengths as a zebra. I said I have a good heart and I'm resilient. I spring back. I try to maintain a good attitude. I am adaptable. I don't know if I'm fabulous. That might, that might be a little too far. I am strong though, and I am adaptable. I'm much stronger than I thought I was. I thought I was really weak, but um, you try being a body with all these things wrong and then call yourself weak. No. No. <laughs> I, have a, I have a life, and, you know, it, 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 it takes strength. It takes strength to have um, a meaningful life with major challenges. And um, for anybody who has... Um, similar challenges or your own challenges. Give yourself credit. Good grief. So today's thing is how do you feel about yourself today? Which is a repeat of the one that was early and I was feeling pretty lousy in that thing that we just read. Um, has anything changed since I started this exercise? If so, what? And if not, why not? And what's next? So I think what's next kind of goes for if it did or didn't change, right? Um, let me think while I'm doing this. How do I feel about myself today? Well... I would say one of I would say one of the things that I for sure learned doing this exercise was this is a lot to deal with and it's no wonder that it gets overwhelming and that I am going to need to do this exercise or something like it every now and then probably forever because I mean, maybe there's a person out there in the world who won't have to. They'll just, they'll, maybe they cannot do this at all, or maybe just do this once and they're, they're good to go. I've never um, known that to be a reality for any human being. Right? I especially function better if I visit, move forward, and then revisit. I always function better if I am two steps forward, one step back. Three steps forward, one step back. I always do better. Um, I have learned since starting this. Um, another thing that's changed is that I have learned that I, um, it's not selfish and lazy 
to lay in my bed for three days. <laughs> if I'm weak and dizzy and going to fall over if I try to get out of my bed for those three days. <laughs> so I'm laughing because that sounds kind of obvious. If you're falling over and you can't think and you don't understand where you are and you get confused really easy and you're going to fall down the stairs if you're not careful. Sometimes I sit down to get down the stairs. Um, maybe you should lay down. And no, you should not feel guilty and lazy about that. So maybe it sounds obvious that you shouldn't. But I'm betting that there's an awful lot of people out there who feel guilty and lazy and, you know, like you're just not accomplishing enough when these things happen. And that's it's funny a little bit to me. I hope it's funny to you too, because, you know, if, if, sometimes you just gotta laugh. When it's not funny is that when there's, when you can almost function normally, but you can't quite meet all those expectations, it's not as easy to see that that's a limitation that is probably due to your physical condition or your mental condition and it requires care. It's easier then to fall into the thinking of you're just lazy or you're just a crybaby or you're just um, a scatterbrain or it, it can be easier to be mean at those times because it feels like, oh, I'm fine. What do you mean? Why can't I get enough done? Why can't I finish all this stuff? Why, whatever. I'm fine and I still can't do it. See, I am failure, a failure. The truth of the matter is that those little, um, those more nuanced times deserve, require, require attention because it's learning those nuanced times, right? That make it so you can identify the cycle and avoid the crashes and um, avoid the negative talk and avoid multitudes of negative things. So, I, that's something I learned. So that has changed. How do I feel about myself today, though? I mean, that is the question, right? And honestly, that hasn't changed a lot. So back here, when I wrote it down, how do I feel about myself today? Pretty bad. And I have fluctuated a bit. Um, but, uh, one of my diagnoses is, um, major depressive disorder and it gets hold of me from time to time pretty severely. And I was much more severe at this point. And then I got a little bit better. And then I had a bit of another crash in, in that department, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, oh, itchy nose. Um, hills and valleys, or yeah, so highs and lows, hills and valleys of the depressive disorder have been going on for uh, a few months, really. And actually, like six months or more, <laughs> according to this book. So if I think about it, how do I feel about myself today? Gosh, I still feel pretty lousy about myself today, but maybe acknowledging that there's, there's hills and valleys and acknowledging that I have indeed asked 
for help in this regard. And I've been honest with my providers in this regard. Maybe that deserves some credit, right? Here's the biggest thing that's changed. The biggest thing that's changed is I have learned to um, feel a little compassion toward myself. I can certainly say that that is a difficult thing for me. I am much, 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 much more likely to feel guilt <laughs> for um, all the reasons and ways that I don't measure up than to feel compassion toward myself. Um, what have I learned and what has changed? I have learned that I am entirely too hard on myself, way too judgy, way too judgy. I don't do it to other people and, and I won't say never, right? I can be judgmental sometimes and then I figure out that, hey, I was being judgmental and then I try to fix that because I don't like that garbage. So I don't like it when I do it to myself either. And it's really, really difficult for me to not. So I don't think that I, f how I feel about myself is not a whole lot different. I would say the thing that's really changed is how I approach that. Has anything changed since you started this exercise? So not the feelings of, about myself necessarily. Let's take an actual look. Lousy. Do I feel lousy about myself? Mostly. Do I feel lazy? No, I'm not really willing to accept that anymore. So that's changed. Do I feel foggy? Yes. <laughs> Do I feel fat? Yes. Do I feel sick? Well, I am. <laughs> so yeah. Do I feel self judgy? A little less. Do I feel like I'm being unfair to myself? Yes. Do I feel like a failure? Yeah. I'd like to say no, but yeah, I guess I do. Do I still feel like a rebellious preteen? As in I'm not doing things that I know are helpful. Mostly Yes, I still feel like a rebellious preteen, but I am forgiving her. It's okay. She can be that way. I can be a rebellious teen sometimes, and it's okay. Um, do I still feel hopeless? <sighs> Half as much as I did then. Feels like the hopeless department doesn't feel like the door is slammed shut and locked. It feels like maybe there was a crack in the door. And there's some light coming in, but it's still over there. <laughs> Am I still overwhelmed? Yes, but I'm getting control of it. Am I still proud of the fact that I am a resilient person? Resilient and resourceful are two things that I am pretty darn good at. Um... So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. 
So what's changed? Well, a few things that you heard, right? For the most part, a lot of this negativity hasn't changed necessarily in, in the way of being gone. They're not flipped, right? But my approach to myself and to these feelings has certainly changed. I guess I'll take it, right? <clears throat> so what has not changed and what's next? Or And, and do I know why it's not changed? Right? Because the next part of it says, if so, what is it? We covered that. And if not, why not? And what's next? So if not, why not? So um, do I feel like a failure? Yes. Has that changed? No. Why not? Well, I can't really say why not other than I think it's a mechanism of depression. Right? I don't think that there's a thing that I can point to that says, oh, look at that, I'm a failure. Or I decided I'm a failure because A, B, and C happened. That's not, that's not it. I think I just have to let it be a mechanism of the depression as an illness. And that um, I just need to recognize that. Do I feel fat? Yeah. Well, I am fat. Shh, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody, but it's true. I'm fat. Sometimes I don't care. I'm doing the best I can. And sometimes I am so mean to me that I should be ashamed of myself. I should quit bullying me. I would never judge anybody else that way. I need to get my head around. Um, this whole practice has been to help me get my head around all of the different things that are going on in life physically as an alien zebra, mentally as, um, you know, a recovering PTSD and depression person. Um, and, um, gosh darn it, it just went right out the window. What was I saying? Okay, this was to get my head around all of that stuff, right? Now I have some things that I have come to conclusions on or had ideas on and some things that I've actually put in place and I've already started doing. Now I need to get my head around maintaining those things regardless of the other stuff that's going on. Not an easy task. Don't judge yourself. It's not easy. This Zen Tingle that I'm doing, I don't know that I'm doing right, so, um, like, don't necessarily say, oh, this is how you do this. If you want to copy what I'm doing, I don't have any problem with that, but it might not actually be the real Zen Tingle. But I'm, it's, I wanted to tell you that it's called Fluffy. And I wanted to tell you about it because, or I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to tell you what it's called because I wanted to acknowledge that I am just often way too hard on myself. And I decided I should do something fluffy. And this is called fluffy. Seemed appropriate. I just did that the opposite way I wanted to. But the gist of it is that you pick one place to curve out from and then go back to. Hmm. 
Yeah, I don't think I'm, do yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm not doing this, like, the technical Zentangle way. But, you know, it's a doodle. I am having an extraordinarily itchy day. I really wish it would stop. Oh my goodness. Okay. I don't know what else to say about today. Let me stop zen tangling and think about this for a second. We might be done with this one. Maybe self-compassion is the only thing that I really want to write for this page. So, um, I shouldn't put my bingo wings up. See, sometimes I'm not very nice to myself. Uh, um, but I always thought that was funny. Bingo wings. <sighs> Has anything changed since I started this exercise? So, in, yeah. Okay, so here's what I should write. Has anything changed? Um, I have more self-compassion, for sure. And... my approach with my with providers is has changed we're going to get into that in more detail later um my my acceptance acceptance of condition at any given time. Um, so that means that I stop to think about it. Like, can I stand today? Can I, can I think today? Can I write today? Can I cut paper today? I don't, I don't know. Um, but I've learned to accept whatever my current condition is at any given minute and try to react to that fairly. goes back to the self-compassion thing, but it is a different mechanism. It's an earlier part of the same chain of events. Um, anything else that has changed since the beginning? Gosh, probably a lot of things. Um, probably it quite a few things, but I, I have a hard time recalling them and putting them all in words. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to just accept this as my answer for right now, and it'll probably develop further over time. That is it for this video. Anyways, how do you feel about yourself today? And if you have if you're just at first tuning into Zebra Talks for the first time right now, go ahead and go back to the beginning. Watch them all in your own time, once a week, um, once a day, or uh, uh, binge. It doesn't matter. But work on these practices and see what they do or don't do for you. Comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me know what has and has not changed for you. See you next time. And then, ooh, it's the last one. And then we're going to move on to new stuff. How exciting. All right, see you, bye.